have in our studio, especially for Mellow Me and Challenge Classics, Angela Brownage, pianist, British pianist, and we're so happy to have you here. I'm Welcome. Japan being a um, pianist composer with a lot of um, technical um, Difficult. difficulties yes. yeah. for, mm. for a pianist mm. to play, mm. um, but also you have to take into account the, the very depth of his music, mm -hmm. uh, expressiveness and, and the, the more subtle nuances. How do you do that as a pianist to uh, have that balance between those two things? Well, obviously I think all musical interpretation is a matter of knowing how to do something technically. Yeah. You have to know how to do it. Yeah. And Chopin does present us with some of the biggest technical difficulties. Mm -hmm. But with the pieces that I chose for the recording, I consider them to be his greatest works because he wrote two sonatas, well he wrote three, but the first one we think is a, a sort of student exercise mm -hmm. in a way. But the two sonatas are both equally important um, as large scale works, yeah. which do actually work properly. They are beautifully crafted pieces. Um, I've already recorded the B minor sonata, so I decided to do the B flat sonata, mm -hmm. which is completely different. And the four ballads, again, I consider to be really the very, very top. The um, core of his... The core of, of his, his composition. Yeah. Um, and the F minor fantasy, which mm -hmm. is his longest single movement work. Yes. Yeah. Now, how you marry this business of technical ability to face these works mm -hmm. is one thing. And the trouble is, I've been on the jury of many competitions, and the young people choose always the most difficult <laughs> studies to play, the most difficult. If I had my way, I would make every competition competitor play a ballad. Yeah. Because therein is the craftsmanship, the art of Chopin, how to mould a piece of music. But also, the emotional depth of it is so that, that's intense. Where, I yeah. think this is the most intense music that he wrote. Yeah. Um, now, but sometimes you don't hear that um, no, when it's played. Actually. No, I know, because, I mean, unfortunately, if one has a technical approach, right, how do I do this? <laughs> how do I do it? Ah, oh, I can do it, and I do it. And you're stuck there. You're stuck there, but yeah. you have to have an emotional yeah. response. And that's the key. It is the key, and unfortunately, I do believe that this emotional response is something that you're born with. Okay. Also, yeah. my very great teacher, Maria Curcio, said to me, darling, it is a gift. <laughs> it is a gift, this response. And she said, you know, I have so-and-so. Oh, I was teaching him the other day. Hopeless. Very British. He cannot, you know, understand. And no emotion. Yeah, yeah. Um, this business of emotional response, if you yeah. feel it, mm -hmm. then this is the danger because you've got to match your feeling with what you can do technically, not the other okay. way around. Yeah. It's this, the emotion. You have to decide what you want to do with this piece, how you feel it. And of course, we are taught, all of us, um, from a certain stage. And then, of course, the lessons stop because you become a professional, you, you have your own thoughts depending on what you have been, you know, you have learned from other people. But it is this emotional response and, and Chopin is so intense. I mean, sometimes you wonder, what was this man feeling? Yeah. You know, I mean, was it all having left his wonderful Poland, his family, yeah. to carve out a career, mm -hmm. eventually in Paris? Um, and he missed his homeland so much yeah. that this, I think, had a, a oh, very, very, you feeling. know, yeah. yes, a very important, it was a, something that he felt all his life that never left him. And yeah. I could understand it, really understand that. You, you, do you also feel those emotions then, or how do you cope with such emotions? Well, I mean, I don't regard myself as being British, for yeah. a start. I mean, my dear teacher, Agosti, said, Signorina, you <laughs> are of the world. Yeah. And this is what you've got to be, of the world. Yeah. You're not just a British thinker. Unfortunately, I'm not Polish. But, you know, yeah. I have to think like a Polish person. Yeah. And, and to be in his, his heart yeah. um, and, and see also, of course, there is the business of 
using Polish music. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Polonaise, the Mazurkas, yeah. things that are, are there. And the Polonaise are very, very dramatic pieces. Mm -hmm. They really are. Um, and so you, you have this element of drama, but also, of course, he was known, quite rightly, as being a wonderful writer yeah. of melodies, cantabile, uh, yeah. the singing tone. Yeah. And there are, thankfully, many comments about his playing when he was in Paris. Mm -hmm. He did start touring in his teens when he was living in Warsaw. When he got to Paris, of course, he played in the homes of the nobility. Yeah. Um, and he needed to teach to earn money. But surprisingly, although people raved about his piano playing, he didn't really enjoy it. After some years, no. he stopped. Yeah. And this is something I think, goodness me, I mean, people were absolutely amazed by the kind of sound that he produced. And even though he had slim hands with mm. long fingers, yeah. one person wrote that it was like watching a snake opening its jaws to <laughs> encompass a rabbit. Um, but, or he was all over the keyboard, yeah. you know, with consummate ease. And, and so all of this kind of thing, you think, again, relaxed technique. Yeah, you couldn't again. have done that without the relaxation. Yeah. Um, and so it is the marriage of the technique and the emotional response. You've got to have both. both.